All right, everybody, you had to assume this video was coming, right? Um, you know, I at first I wasn't going to do a reaction video to all the stuff that's been going on, but, like, even streaming today it was constant. Hey, did you see this? Hey, what did you think of this? Hey, so-and-so's tweet, so-and-so's video, you know, it's just like, okay, all right. Clearly, people want to know, so I will post a video doing a little bit of a reaction to all the drama and all the stuff that's been going on. But I want to start the video with some positive stuff first. Um, the next video up on the channel should be the Rapacious Appetite SMG review. Uh, crafted it, played with it for several hours, hundreds of kills on it, so we've got a lot of thoughts about that SMG, if it's worth your time. So that should go up Sunday or Monday, so you can uh, expect to see that then. And to warm your heart a little bit, this is Luna. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you good girl, aren't you? She's like, put me down, Dad. What, what's going on? She's the newest addition to our family. She's been with us for several weeks now, and she's wonderful. So everybody say hi to Luna. Likes on the video for Luna. I have to go now. <laughs> I have to go. My people need me. Bye. So anyways, we've got a lot of stuff to cover. Before we dive into it, real quick, let me give a shout out to today's sponsor, Aura. You wanna know what's friggin' scary? I Googled my name and on the very first page of results, it listed my full legal name, my address, and my phone number. Listen, I don't really wanna be that findable, you know what I mean? I value my privacy. The unfortunate reality is that there are data brokers out there right now who are getting rich by selling yours and my information to anyone willing to pay for it. That's why I genuinely think today's sponsor is worth knowing about, it's Aura. Aura has a one primary goal, and that's to identify data brokers who are exposing your personal information and remove their permission to do so. Think of it, if you will, as sending a sort of cease and desist on your behalf. The thing is, these brokers allow you to opt out of having your information sold, but they've basically stacked the deck against you, so it's really hard to do. They've sort of walled you off from that option. But Aura is your one step to hurdling that high wall. And the best part of this sponsorship is that they're actually going to offer you their services for free for two weeks. So you can click on the link in the description or the pinned comment or visit the URL shown here and then see who's trading your info out there. But you can also set up a number of other features like antivirus, VPN, password management, insurance against identity theft, and my personal favorite service is parental controls. Both of my kids are spending more time on the internet these days gaming and interacting with friends. I sleep a lot better at night knowing that I'm being intentional and proactive about protecting their privacy and their innocence when they're connected. And Aura offers all of these services at a very competitive price. So stop being nonchalant about your security and your privacy. Try Aura out for free for two weeks by going to Aura.com slash True Vanguard and see if this could be a good fit for you and your household. All right, let's get back to Destiny. So there's several things we got to talk about today. We got the Astacross vid, uh, talking about a marathon, uh, the artwork drama, the community, uh, the PvP community drama, all that stuff. There's plenty to talk about. I'm going to start with the PvP stuff. I want to talk about Jake first, right? Um, and I've, I've seen people underplaying this, and I don't think that we had the luxury of underplaying this personally. I think a lot of people underestimate Jake's influence in the community, especially the PvP community. Um, Jake is one of those things that, you know, the sun rises in the east, bears crap in the woods, and Grenader Jake streams trials, right? It's just one of those given things about the universe, when all is in balance, it just, it happens. It's a natural occurrence. Um, the fact that Jake is stepping away and doing variety content is a big deal. Um, I think a lot of people are like, oh, big deal. A streamer is moving on. Um, Jake's influence is widespread. It's deep-seated, and it reaches really far. The um, numbers that he pulls in on Twitch are just incredible. And for a lot of people, it's that connection to a community. Not just Jake. It's not about a streamer. It's a connection to a community and an event that is recurring that keeps them engaged. So for a lot of PvP players out there, it's a connectedness to the to the jungle squad. A connectedness to, sure, Jake is the figurehead of it, but it's a community, it's an experience that is uh, ingrained in their routine and it's now not going to be there in the same way. So the fact that he's moving into variety is going to have an impact on the PvP community. It absolutely will have an impact. And then beyond that, we have to look at why. Okay, well, why is he stepping away? Uh, you know, and for Jake, obviously, he deals with a lot more cheaters than I do because he's on PC, and that's where he spends his time. I uh, make all my content, almost all of my content on um, on PS5. Uh, I do have a fair amount of PC gameplay sprinkled in from time to time because a lot of the guys that I play with when I'm recording footage are on PC. But neither here nor there. He experiences some of the, the pain points 
to a further degree than I do. On PC, his player pool is smaller than mine. I've got Xbox and PlayStation to pull from. He just has the PC community. Add into that the fact that PC is where the cheaters are. I know a lot of people claim to run into cheaters all the time on console. Uh, that's not true. They may from time to time run into cheaters on console, but they are not consistently running into players on console that are cheating. Uh, what's most likely happening is they're playing against a player that is a combination of two things, uh, poor connection and uh, are better than them. And then when you get those two things mixed in, a lot of times people misinterpret that as cheating. But on PC where Jake is, he's running into these streamers all the time. They're ruining cards for him and for other players in the community. It's derailing his streaming experience. It's de derailing the runs that they're trying to help people out with. And uh, you could argue against carry culture. That's totally fine. If you want to have a belief that carry culture is bad for the game, that's fine. But we can all agree that cheaters ruining everybody's cards is a bad thing, right? I think that's common ground that we all have together, right? Cheaters equal bad. So if uh, Bungie is unwilling to allocate resources to combating these cheaters. And that was kind of Jake's point. He was like, listen, you guys got a ton of money. You can't hire one person to, to just ban on command, you know, be able to be uh, tuned into streams, uh, to receive reports in real time, to see this stuff happening and do something about it on the fly. He's saying, you don't have the resources to do that. I don't now. This is again, this is armchair dev armchair game developer. We don't know how, game dev works and how all the intricacies go, right? It, we're, we're from the sidelines here making recommendations. But you have to agree that it, to a certain extent, it's like, I feel like this should be more of a priority than it is dealing with cheaters if it's ruining people's experiences in Trials of Osiris specifically, but also elsewhere in Comp and Sixes as well. And a lot of people also ask the question, well, how do you not have like auto detection capabilities? Like if somebody shoots five rockets on round one where you're not supposed to have heavy ammo. That should be a red flag in the system that says, hey, this guy's doing something fishy. You know what I'm saying? Or if a guy's flying around the map full autoing a heavy machine gun, brrrr, or somebody is one-shotting you with a wish ender through every wall on the map, these are things that should not happen. You know, maybe we should have systems in place that can detect when these things happen that should never happen in the game. And when they do, it sends up a red flag. Now, again, armchair dev, we're pretending like we know how this stuff works, so we always say these things with a bit of humility and say we don't understand the intricacies of all this stuff, but at least give us some clarity. I know you don't, it's not like commonplace for a developer to talk about their anti-cheat um, systems because they don't want to, they don't want to show their hand. They want to catch cheaters, but at the same time, um, I think it's important to give the community a little bit of, um, I don't know. Build up some trust here. Let us know it's on your radar. It's a priority. You have systems in place. You have plans. You know what I mean? And 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 not hearing anything about any of that makes it feel like neglect, whether it is or isn't. So um, you don't want your community to feel neglected. And that's kind of going to be a running theme throughout the video is this feeling of neglect. So along those lines, PvP players... You know, you want them to have a little bit of grace. Extend a little grace to Bungie. Things are hard. Development is slow. We understand these things. And we've been patient. So, but the thing is, trust and grace, they do need to be earned. And Bungie has, I think, I think they have used up all of our reserves for grace in the PvP community. And there's, and we talk about this plenty of times. This isn't anything new on my channel. But it's this disconnect between what we're told and what we receive. What we are told is that you're going to start getting new maps regularly. They fumbled on that almost immediately. And uh, the expectation they set, they under-delivered on. And now you're looking at one new PvP map, like one a year at best. And that's even with a question mark. And I think the original plan was a new map every other season, a returning map every other season. So they'd alternate. Um, and they dropped the ball immediately on that promise. Um, we've heard promises like a renewed focus on PvP. I know it's a bit of a meme now, but it is something they said, okay? We can't just bury our heads in the sand and pretend that they didn't say that. They did say that. Um, we've even had, uh, you know, Joe, who I think is, I think Joe's great. Don't get me wrong. Um, but he has come out and said things like, we can't imagine a version of Destiny where PvP isn't a core part of the experience. PvP needs to be there. That is our vision for Destiny. 
And that's the guy at the top. And if he says that, you know, it sets an expectation. So what we're told, we're constantly told things about how good PvP is going to be, about future plans, about future development. But what we get is actually not development, it's just support. So PvP is supported, it is not enhanced. We were told we would get new armor sets. And we don't. We don't get new armor sets. It's not something that happens in PvP, you know? All the armor sets are wrapped up in uh, Eververse, which is, again, something we'll talk about later. Great new armor sets in Eververse. Great new armor sets on the Battle Pass. I think this season's um, armor set ornaments later in the Battle Pass are phenomenal. I love those sets. The dungeon sets look great. Like, there's great armor in Destiny. None of it goes to PvP. This feeling of neglect. When you feel neglected, the amount of grace you're willing to give... It gets diminished uh, time and time again until, and that's why I think we, why we are where we are right now, is that people have run out of their reserves and things are hitting the fan. And that's why you see people like Jake saying, I've been given grace. I have been patient. I have been committed and faithful and dedicated to this game. And my dedication is I'm not seeing returns on my investment. I feel like this is a one-way relationship here where I'm giving... And you're taking. Um, and you might say, okay, well, he's a streamer and he's making money. Of course he's taking. Yes. But he represents a, a, a class of player. You know, for one, Jake, there are tens of thousands of dedicated PvP players who don't get anything out of the experience. They're constantly giving. And now, the you know, one of the leaders in our community is echoing how they feel. It's going to motivate them even more to distance themselves that's what you do in a relationship that's one-sided eventually you catch on to what's going on and you distance yourself and i think that's where a lot of people are right now it's the feeling of neglect means we're out of grace and we're out of patience and we're saying bye-bye but tv you're still here do you want you must love pvp um listen i love destiny i'm always gonna love destiny i love destiny pvp when it's good it is so good and it is so it can be dynamic and exciting but um but yes, I mean, my, my grace is running pretty low. Um, if I'm being fully transparent, do I love Destiny? Yes. Do I still have fun making Destiny content? Yes. Do I still put my heart in my content? Yes. If my content could be just as successful on a different game, would I cover a different game? Yeah. I mean, it'd be crazy not to, right? It'd be crazy not to expand your horizons. When you, I've been, it's not that I, I don't like Destiny. I've just been doing it for almost 10 years. You know what I mean? Eventually, you just like, hey, I would love to try something else. And if that uh, opportunity arises, you know, maybe I'll take it. But one of the things I have to consider is, uh, for me, I'm the sole provider for a, a family. I'm not just a guy living a bachelor life in an apartment, uh, and I can afford to just save up for a few months of expenses and then go take an adventure on a different game. I have to think about other people that rely on me, and that's the reality I live in. So it's not, I don't hate Destiny. I'm not sick and tired of Destiny, and I can't wait to leave. No, I still love it. But if I had the opportunity to do what I do on a different game, I would probably take it. And I can't fault Jake, because Jake uh, has a great... I mean, it's no secret. We know how much money people make off Twitch subs. The guy's revenue stream is jacked, right? And he can afford to say, you know what? I'm going to try something else. Good on you, Jake. I'm proud of you. I'm happy. You earned the right to do that. I hope one day I'll earn the right to do that. That'd be really cool. Uh, you know, I hope to, to experiment with some other content. And some of my variety content has done really well. Some of it uh, tanks, you know? It's, and that's the thing. It's just a risk. And are you willing to take that risk? If I'm a, a bachelor, yes. If I'm a family man, maybe not, <laughs> you know? So that's kind of the reality I live in. But it's not just Jake. I mean, you got people like Lanza, Frostbolt, airing grievances online very publicly. And uh, I think things are just coming to a head for a lot of folks. And, um, you know, rightfully so. Uh, PvP development came to a stop in Destiny. And you, you can't argue that fact. I mean, I know it's really trendy to, to uh, impression farm by saying, ah, oh, you PvPers, all you do is whine and complain, blah, blah, blah. We don't get the things you guys get. But we're promised things. And uh, that's where the disconnect is. It's not that PvPers are feeling entitled. It's that they, they don't get anything but they're told they're gonna get something but they never get anything and that's why they feel the way they feel it's not entitlement it's holding a company to uh, a standard that they laid out not us we didn't we didn't set those standards 
We didn't set those expectations. They did. We're just starting to realize that whether it's intentional or not, they were not honest um, about the direction PvP was going, about how much time and investment and priority it was going to get on the developer side. Uh, again, like I, I'm a big fan of Bungie, so this is not. I'm not like just being a big anti Bungie person. I love Destiny, but whether it was intentional or not, they were dishonest about PvP and Destiny. And I think if you look at all the facts, you keep a record of what they've said, you will know that to be true beyond a shadow of a doubt. And then transitioning a little bit into the marathon discussion, you know, a lot of people are like, well, the, the, the announcement about marathon was sort of the nail in the coffin for a lot of folks. And I think it, it was, is that fair? Some yes, some no. Um, naive to assume that Bungie wasn't working on another project. I think we all knew that. But naive to assume that they wouldn't take funds and money that they were generating through Destiny and apply it to different projects. Naive to assume they wouldn't do that. Of course they were going to do that. They were always going to do that. They're a company that covers, you know, they want to make other projects. They take their revenue stream and they disperse it as they see fit. They were always going to do that. Is it somewhat disappointing? Sure. I mean, in the past, we spent a lot of money as a community on ornaments, and we were told that those ornaments went to fund the development of one of the coolest experiences in Destiny 2, the Zero Hour Mission. And that feels really good to know that your, your money is directly supporting the game that you love. I think people like that feeling. And I would love to know that, you know, the ornament sets that I'm buying through Eververse are going to go to uh, further development of PvP. That would be great to say, hey, you know, guys, that banger ornament that you bought for Arbalest, all the money that we made for that, that, that went to fund the development of this new PvP map that you guys love. That would be so cool. But it's not the reality we live in, uh, and that wasn't the case here either. So Marathon happened. Here's where I think it is somewhat fair, right? Playing devil's advocate a bit, but also, on the other hand, uh, if you're a PvP enthusiast, seeing uh, Bungie take some of the people that you looked up to to be the leaders at Bungie who were working on your behalf, you know, Lars Bakken, you know, Chris Barrett, uh, people who have been connected to our community, our Destiny community directly, who have uh, been rece recipients of feedback, right? They have di directly interacted with feedback online from our community several times in the past. So knowing that they were there working on our behalf in the Destiny community was always a, was a comfort thing. You know, these are the people we look up to. These are the people we trust. And then to see Scott Taylor, Lars Bach, and Chris Barrett, you know, these guys are not in Destiny anymore. They haven't been on Destiny in a long time. They've been working on this other thing. Um, we are happy for them. I think Marathon's probably going to be a banger game. Um, but it does make you feel, as a PvP enthusiast, like, well, yeah, well, there you have it. That's why <laughs> we're not getting anything, because our advocates are gone. The people advocating for us... They're gone. They're on something else now. And so it sort of validated feelings they were already feeling. And then, of course, it, naive to assume that Destiny would get all the new bells and whistles. Uh, you know, Marathon is getting all the bells and whistles. You know, the dedicated servers, the anti-cheat protection, uh, all that stuff that we wish we had in Destiny, they're getting. And it's, it's easy to feel neglected because of that. The reality is that uh, retroactively introducing those systems into a game that already exists is a nightmare. It is a huge challenge. So it is no surprise to me that Marathon is getting those things and Destiny is not. I mean, it's just not that simple. It's not that they chose to do it for them and chose not to do it for us. It's really not that simple. There's a lot of uh, complex intricacies there. But that being said, I do think the Marathon uh, announcement did take some of the wind out of PvP sales and just kind of let that realization sink in for a lot more PvP enthusiasts that A, I think they've moved on. You know, we felt like it was the case for a while now, but now we're getting the confirmation, sort of the nail in the coffin for some folks. So that's why people are feeling the way they feel. Now, uh, talk a little bit about the artwork snafu. I think this has already been resolved, so we don't need to spend a lot of time on it. But uh, what happened is we got a new cutscene in Destiny, uh, which was cool. I think the consensus was like, this is a banger cutscene. It gives us a ton of story development. It should have happened at the end of Lightfall. So that we got some of those answers. Because honestly, we're like, the finish line's right there. And Bungie has a lot of stuff to wrap up. So the fact that we're getting this cutscene this late, this close to the finish line, I think people are like, yo, 
Y'all gotta step up the pace. Like, this is a banger cutscene, and we love it, we appreciate it, but you may want to pick things up a little bit here because <laughs> we're getting to the end. Uh, but anyways, in that cutscene, there was uh, artwork that was a, a direct ripoff of uh, artwork made by a community member. And uh, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding around the situation. So let me just unpack it accurate, as accurately as I can and as briefly as I can. So the artist did submit this for, you know, the art of the week or whatever. And technically in TOS, that means when you submit it, you are giving uh, Bungie the rights to use it. But to understand that properly, a lot of people are like, they can use it in the game. That's not what that was intended for. That, that clause is there uh, so that they can put it in their TWABs, right? They can put it on their website. They can feature your artwork there and you're not going to come after them, right? Uh, so that's why that was there. It wasn't so that they could just drag and drop it into a cutscene, not give you credit or compensation. That, that was never the purpose of that deal, that arrangement. So, um, and Bungie did make good on this. Uh, they came full circle. They said, hey, uh, really apologize about this. Uh, we reached out to the artist. We apologized to them. Uh, we compensated them. Here's what happened. We outsourced the work for this cutscene to, uh, you know, a, a different studio that does does work like this, right? Right, we outsourced the cutscene and they made the assumption that this artwork they found on our website was ours. And it was not, so that's where the confusion happened. They thought it was fair game for them to use in the cutscene um, and we didn't catch it. That's on us, right? And uh, a lot of people were like... <sighs> People fell on different parts of this conversation. It, it, you had people in the extreme who were like, as soon as they saw it, they're like, Bungie's evil. Bungie's stealing your artwork on purpose and hoping we wouldn't catch it. It's like, no. No, they were not doing that. And people will call you a shill for saying this, but that's stupid. Like, no, no company like Bungie is going to intentionally do something that's going to get them caught up in a scandal, right? This was inevitable that the artists would see their artwork, make a comment about it, and people would rally around them. That, that was inevitable. You're not, you're not going to do something intentionally to get yourself caught up in a scandal for bad press in the middle of a season where you're getting bad press. Like that, That's dumb, right? It was a mistake. It should have been avoided, but it was a mistake. It wasn't an intentional thing where they tried to steal somebody's artwork and take credit for it. Um, and then a lot of people were like, why are they outsourcing this work anyway? They're a huge studio. It's like, bro. This is commonplace. It is extremely commonplace in the industry to outsource work like this. Why? Because, I mean, you don't, you're not dishing out tons of cutscenes like this. I mean, one every season, maybe? I guess it's, it's not something that you're going to have a team there full time to develop these things. And you're going to pay them, uh, you know, their salary wages and, and uh, benefits and all that stuff. You're not going to do that. You're going to outsource the work when you need it to a company that can whip it up quickly. And that's what they do, right? Very commonplace. So anyways, we got uh, clarity on that. Uh, that one's been kind of wrapped up. I think we can move on from it. The last major bit of drama, I guess, is this Ask Across video. And I, so many people are asking me, what do you think of the Ask Across video? Did you watch the Ask Across video? What are your reactions to the Ask Across video? Um, so I'll, I'll respond to that briefly. If you're not aware, which I, I'm assuming all of you are aware, Ask Across made a video about microtransactions in Destiny 2, right? And that video's sitting at like a million views. Tons of people, people who don't even play Destiny, who aren't connected to Destiny, watch that video and it's making Bungie look bad, obviously. Um, you know, rightfully so in a lot of these instances. Uh, a lot of it's fair criticism. Some of it isn't, most of it is. Um, so I agree with a lot of what he said. Uh, some of it I think is a stretch, but uh, most of it's pretty accurate. Uh, I think we all know that Bungie's microtransactions are I mean, they've been progressing. They've been getting worse. Um, Destiny is not free to play. It's free to try. I think it's not a new saying. Ask Cross kept saying that in the video. Uh, and he's absolutely right. Uh, you know, most of the content for Destiny is locked behind paywalls. And those paywalls are really confusing, too. This is, they're not, like, really easy to understand. You know, uh, it's easy to get confused and have to make two or three purchases to do the stuff you want to do when you thought maybe you just needed one purchase. So, and then on top of that, they just keep, they just keep directing you to the store, right? You want to decrypt your bright engrams? You can't do that at Rahul. You can't do it in your inventory. You got to go to the store, uh, pull up the store to decrypt those bright engrams. And then you see the cool flashy stuff that's in the store because you're already there. So they're, they're trying to funnel you towards seeing the things that you can buy. 
uh, the things that are gonna make them money. So uh, yeah, that whole video had a lot of good points. To me, this isn't the biggest issue in Destiny. This is an issue in Destiny. I think it is a big issue in Destiny. But for me, I think it's like people are finding things to criticize. Uh, they're sorting out how they feel about things right now because they got nothing else to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Destiny's not going anywhere. That's the problem. Destiny isn't going anywhere. Destiny is just being Destiny season after season after season after season. It's just being what it has been for years. So it's not developing. It's not growing. It's not enhancing. Yeah, we get some quality of life improvements that uh, we do have to uh, give credit where it's due. We do get some quality of life improvements that are great to have. You know, the loadouts and you know, weapon crafting and all that stuff. It's great. But in terms of actually going places, Destiny is just continuing to be Destiny right now. And it has been for years. More so in the PvP community, it's just been what it has been for years with nothing new. For the most part. So that fatigue is setting in. And now people are coming to realize how they feel about issues that Destiny has had for a while. I think the microtransactions is one of them. There's nothing new, really. I mean, some of it's new. I mean, like the... Um, Ah, what are they called? The, the the red border currency that's in the that's in the battle pass that you can then apply to getting your red borders more quickly. Stuff like that, that's new, but for the most part, this trend of microtransactions is nothing new in Destiny. We're just suddenly realizing the truth about it and how we feel about it. So what's the solution here? Um, I think we're honestly, just to set expectations realistically, I think we're too late in the game to expect significant change in destiny 2 destiny 2 is about run its course destiny 2 is about done you know so i think we might see some small changes here and there but to expect revolutionary change in destiny that's going to uh take us into new places that we love and appreciate i think it's an unrealistic expectation we're almost at the finish line right now most of the like groundwork has been laid for the rest of what destiny 2 will be already because development is slow, you know, uh, the final shape content is probably mostly solidified at this point in terms of what it's going to be. And a lot of work has already been done building on that foundation. Uh, so expecting significant change is unrealistic. But for the next saga, you know, we got the Light vs. Dark saga that's coming to a close. For the next saga, whether it's Destiny 3 or Destiny 2 continued or whatever it's going to be called, I don't know. Uh, but for that saga... Hopefully we see Bungie start to innovate again, start to push the boundaries again, uh, start to develop PvP again, and you can avoid all of this. You can avoid all of this. I think the seasonal model uh, was set in stone a while ago, so expecting change there, unrealistic, but maybe in the next saga, we see the seasonal model get a, a significant overhaul. You know what I mean? So... I don't know where we go from here, uh, everyone. I just think that we have to set our expectations realistically and just understand that what we have right now for Destiny 2 is pretty close to the way it's going to look when Destiny 2 ends. So if you don't like where Destiny 2 is right now, maybe a step away. Go, there's tons of great games out there right now. Uh, you know, take your leave. Come back when you're interested in trying out the, the story. You want to see what's happening. Yeah, it's great. Um, but don't expect things to change significantly. I would love to be proven wrong. Don't get me wrong. I would love to be wrong about that. But I think that's the reality. So don't expect any significant change. And this video has been super long. So let's wrap it up. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. I know this was... I just... I wanted to respond to all the things so that when people ask me, how do you feel about this? I can just go watch this video. Go watch this video. You know what I mean? I'll probably just make it a command in chat. Speaking of which, if you want to catch us live streaming, uh, I do so over on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash The True Vanguard. Love to see you over there. Uh, we stream... Over there a few times a week. Have a good time doing it. Great people over there. Would love to see you there. Uh, feel free to tune into the Rapacious Appetite video, which should be going up uh, first thing next week. Thanks for watching this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. If you didn't, I apologize. Uh, but yeah, be warm and well, my friends, and I hope to catch you in the Crucible. Bye bye.